welcome back to Brick Gaming YGO. Today I'm bringing a deck profile which is a little bit interesting. Normally all my videos are about competitive decks like the meta, how to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh, all that type of stuff. But, but I do have a soft spot for uh, a couple of um, older decks, a couple of decks that I've always really enjoyed. And this is going to be a beta version of um, Alien uh, Paleozoic. So, to kind of explain my beta version, it's basically what I have for the deck so far. And in the next week to two weeks, I will be doing more deck profiles for this build or different builds that you can try out with aliens. And I'm doing this because I see there's a lot of lack of people playing this deck online, but I see that a lot of people really love this deck, are really interested in learning about this deck. And the deck is also relatively cheap, minus a few cards, and it's super, super fun. So if you guys like this type of content, if you guys want to see more like this, leave a like, please comment, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I would love to see my, my subscribers increase. I would love to get to 100 subscribers. That would be amazing. So please drop a subscribe. Please uh, drop a subscribe if, or a subscription, whatever you want to call it, um, if you are not already. So let's get right into this deck profile. First off, I play Triple Ammonite. This is literally one of the best cards in the deck. Um, it's a Monster Reborn. Okay, so so uh, Monster Reborn, best card in the deck. All you need to do is use your normal summon, and hopefully you haven't normal summoned at all. But, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's literally like... 2005 it's 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 old so um it, it, it was pretty good back then plus with paley zoe it makes this card so much better just because you have uh less normal summons and more ways to get into this guy next i play triple shock trooper shock trooper is really good because it's basically a free rank four and it can grab you uh really whatever you need to really start your engine and then we play with that triple rescue rabbit now this may seem like a lot of um searching a lot of cards that just are uh, repetition but i will fix this problem once i kind of get this deck a little bit more finished up once i get some cards in pick up the last of the cards i need and I've already ordered every card I need for this deck that's not already here. But this is the version I'm testing out for right now and the ones I have actually like physical copies of. No proxies except for like two in the extra deck. So yeah, I, I put a lot of effort into this based upon what I had. Uh, so this is what we're playing so far for those. Then um, I'm playing two alien kids. This card is really, really amazing. Um, and by really amazing, he places A counters on the field. And if you don't know what A counters are, it's basically the way that this deck works. Everything re revolves around A counters and abusing A counters to get more on the field. Also, A counters for all these guys reduces attack and defense, which can stack quite a bit. And based upon how many A counters a monster has, they'll on average lose 300 attack and defense per each one. That's what his effect is. So he first off places them on special summon monsters uh, on your opponent's side of the field. So this is a pretty four problem solving car tech. So here, here's a little bit of a fun uh, effect for you guys. Place one A count on all monsters special summon to your opponent's side of the field. So if you guys know what that means, please comment down below. And you guys, just inform other people. I mean, I could inform you guys, but you know, I want to see who knows their PCST or PSCT, Problem Solving Card Tech. So, then moving on, I have one Alien Warrior. I feel like this card's really power crept. I want, I'm getting my second copy in, but even though I'm getting a second copy in, this is one of the most power crept cards in the deck. Because he has a destruction effect. But it's only by battle, battle. So this was before like a count of card effects for a lot of effects. This is basically like a Mystic Tomato that places A counters. But he also has a 300 attack and defense reduction for monsters uh, with A counters as well, which is really cool. And I'm considering getting more copies of this guy possibly, but um, Ilian Telepath. I think for right now it's maybe a really good one, maybe at most two of, just because um, it destroys spells and traps. Once again, this is before problem solving card tech, so I'll read out the very fun effect on him. And and yes, it's it's a great effect. Once per turn, you can remove one A counter from an opponent's monster to destroy one spell or trap. If you know if this card is non-targeting or not, also comment that down below to inform other people about that problem solving card text. Then that was all the monsters you play them for spells. Uh, 
triple pot desires you really want to draw into more cards you want to get more cards into your hand that's like this deck's biggest problem is just not having enough cards and not being able to uh really snowball into more card advantage since like almost none of the main deck cards really search and then we don't really have like an archetype searching for the most part there's a couple but they're, they're very very slow then uh triple code a ancient ruin now i used to think this card was horrible because it gives a cameras based upon um the numbers of alien monsters destroyed so for each one destroyed it gets one a counter and you can remove two from anywhere on the field anywhere on the field to special summon an alien monster from graveyard so this is also a soft one per turn to reborn so if you have three of these and you just have a bunch of a counters all over the field somehow then you can just start reborning like crazy you get two of these guys you're basically making rank four or doing insane link plays just it's crazy now my build's a little bit more based upon the xyz builds from back in the day but but it's still really cool you can still do like a lot of really abusive stuff with that card i would say it's like one of the most abusable cards in the deck next is um double mysterious triangle now you could of course play more of this card uh if you wanted to but but it's a little bit slow so first off you had first off to uh activate this card you attempt to destroy one monster on the field with an a counter so you at least have to attempt to destroy one so you have to hope your opponent didn't remove any a counters by linking off or getting rid of their guys and then from there um uh, it, the secondary effect, the secondary effect is broken. You can special summon one level 4 alien monster from your deck, destroy it during the end phase. So, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty broken. Uh, it's just a special summon from deck. But the thing is that you don't want to do it on your opponent's turn unless it's like, uh, you're summoning kid from your deck, and then you can place more 8 counters. But if you don't have a kid, um, well, then you're kind of stuck because then you can only do it on your own turn and then it kind of you're hoping. And the reason I'm saying you, you can only do it on your own turn is because you only want to do it on your own turn. Otherwise, it's just kind of weak on your opponent's turn unless, unless you have this card in tandem with it. And the card I'm talking about is Planet Pollutant Device. And this is going to lead us into the trap lineup, but Planet Pollutant Device is a card that is based around uh tributing off an alien monster then when you tribute off that monster you can destroy all face up monsters with a counters your opponent controls and then until the end of your opponent's next turn or third turn my bad third turn after this card you place one a counter on each monster they uh summon not even normal summon not even special summon just summon that's why this card's so good and i don't want to play more because it's really hard to get to your alien monsters in this deck unless you open really well and this card is usually better late game like you're hardly ever resolving this card on second turn but if you open these two cards together and you have kid in your deck you can first stop activate this and this is also if your opponent doesn't have any negates you activate this summon kid then activate planet pollutant device because at that point you want your opponent to have a couple of specials and monsters you blow up all of their monsters by tributing off kid and then you place a counters on them and it, it's pretty good it's basically just like a very slow very early 2000s uh board wipe yeah talking about combos from the 2000s very cool um then getting into the paleozoics just going to talk about these guys a little bit i um, play two dimiscus then i play three canadias and i play three olenoides i was looking able to find these in my bulk always feels good but the reason you're playing three three and two is because you add discard for dimiscus i mean it's amazing like to be able to banish one of your opponent's cards off the field the problem is that you don't really have very many cards in your hand and if you do have wild cards in your hands it's cards that you're going to need for other reasons and the only thing that's really good for is getting rid of additional rescue rabbits that you can't use anymore but there is a way to infinitely loop uh the shock troopers and rescue rabbits and i'll get that into the extra deck but it's usually a 50 50 card it can be really good or it can just be a dead card this card is always really good the only matchup it's bad against right now is uh sky strikers every other matchup it's super amazing against and olenoides is good probably about against 60 to 70 percent of the meta i would say there's anything that sets cards this card's good for those matchups and those are all the um paleozoic mon monsters slash traps you play 
Now I play Triple Trap Trick. This just gets you to your traps faster. Searches almost out almost every single trap you need to search out. Then I play Double Lost Win. Lost Win is also really broken in this deck. If I were to bump up any trap, it would either be this or Fog Blade, and we'll talk about Fog Blade in a second. But yeah, Lost Win. Very, very, very good. Uh, next, I have my very, very disappointing uh, comment of Fiendish Chain. Now, this card is actually still super busted in this deck. I would say at some points it's even better than Fog Blade in some respects. Basically, because you can still attack the monster instead of not being able to attack it. That's like the one benefit with this card. Uh, but overall, Fiendish Chain is really good. Uh, I ordered my uh, first edition super, so I'll, I'll have those in pretty shortly, and we'll be able to play those, um, and just have them actually looking nice. But yeah, this card's really busted. Would highly recommend. Do not spend money on the ulti because those are too expensive. Even for most Yu-Gi-Oh players, really invest in them. Uh, then also, I play one Fog Blade right now. I might bump this up to two. I don't know, I feel like Phoenix Chains overall is still a better card in my opinion, just based upon card effects and what it does, but I will wait and see and go from there. Uh, then I play two Oasis. Oasis is pretty interesting. I was really actually considering Call by the Grave, because if you guys know anything about aliens, you know that they have Cosmic Fortress Dude, and this card I feel like is better than Call by the Grave because it summons in defense, and a lot of your uh, guys don't have very much attack. And it's just a good way to avoid taking damage when you don't need to take damage or just, you know, gain more recursion because that had a little bit of a hard time with recursion. And then, of course, one Imperial Order because you're playing a trap deck and your spells don't matter as much as your traps. Because your spells, you want to see them early game. Your traps, you want to see all the time. And that's uh, the main deck. Then moving on to the extra deck, here comes the proxies. Two Opabinia and then one of uh, the other Paleozoic. So the Poppy guy, which obviously I don't have a copy of, he pops stuff, he blows stuff up, he does stuff with traps. He's the most least important extra deck card. But Opabinia is really broken. And this is the card that really matters in this deck because it lets you activate your Paleozoic traps from hand. It searches for them. It's any two level two monsters. Overall, this card is just really, really good. And it's what will make this deck actually work faster and be able to make it so I don't just auto lose with it. Then uh, I play one number 29 mannequin cat because at least any matchup you're going to, your opponent must have at least one fire monster, one earth monster, one light monster, one of those in their deck so you can resolve mannequin cat. As long as they have earth, light, or fire, you're able to also reborn or summon out your uh, alien monsters from your deck. And by doing that, um, it just gets you free advantage and free resources. And I feel like this this card, this card is amazing in this deck. It's literally what the deck needed. It's all that you needed. Then, um, well, not all I need, but you know, something that will add consistency. Then for the XYZs, I rank four. I play one Dugares. This is the one that's come up least so far in testing. One Dweller, Dweller, super amazing. One Digusto Emerald, which is also super amazing. Like, surprisingly, that Gusta Emerald is really good with Shock Troopers just because it's a free monster reborn, and that's really important in the deck. And then it's also able to loop back uh, Shock Trooper plus Rescue Rabbits into deck. Primarily, the Shock Troopers are the one that you're going to loop back. And that way, makes your Rescue Rabbits later on in the game more alive. You can loop back Emonite, and that way, you can get additional normal summons later on. Really, really good. Uh, next, uh, for right now, I, I, it was going to be two King of Feral Imps, but I'll, I'll, I only have one, unfortunately. I had to order in the other one, but once I get that, number 82 will become King of Feral Imps. But either way, surprisingly, number 82 is good because as long as you have a face-up spell, which you play three of in the respective Code 8 Ancient Ruins, it can't, can't, can't be attacked or uh, targeted for an attack by an opponent. So that's really good, and then you can detach and attack directly. And the, this deck's biggest problem is that you don't have very much um, damage output until late game. You have to make it to late game on like three cards a turn at most. At most, three cards. And Hurl and Draco really just helps out with that. It makes it so that um, 
you, you can last longer before you really need to like actually start getting a bunch of additional resources. And same with this next card, Tornado Dragon. Tornado Dragon is super good in this deck, it just deals with cards. Super, super good. And all these cards you can make off of just one card, Rescue Rabbit, which is really amazing for this deck. Then moving on to the Lynx. Um, I, I really uh, added in a lot of XYZ, so the Link Engine is very small, small right now, but it's going to get bigger, and that's a Mr. Boy and a Bora Load. Now, this may seem a little bit weird to play these two, and I would agree with you, but the deck's still being worked on, still coming along. I mean, if you guys have any suggestions down below in the comments, please let me know. It will help out a great deal, but this is what I have for Links right now. And then finally, for the Synchros, I have two Cosmic Fortresses. Uh, these guys are super broken, but they're also not really worth the value that they're going for online. So, uh, yeah, take that with a grain of salt, but it's what you need for the deck. If you're going to play the deck, this is the one card you definitely need that you may have to invest a little bit of money into to get your two or three copies. If you're going to play an extravagance build, I would highly recommend three. If you're going to play a deck that, like a build where there is no extravagance, you can play two and that could save you a little bit of money. And I will also be doing an extravagance build in the future, hopefully. And then finally, one high speed roid, uh, Chimbara. And this is just because the deck needs more damage output. Like, out of everything it can need more of is damage output. Oh, and also consistency. But there, there really isn't very much extra consistency cards, except for Dugara is. So, yeah, that's my deck profile. I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Please check out more of my videos. Please leave a sub. Um, thank you guys, and I will see you all in the next video.